Now God, if you will, knows of our potential for love, for compassion, and for goodness. All of which can be overtaken by ego if we're not careful. But the soul remains a part of us. And that is a part of us that a parent loves no matter what. Al Tuggle tells a story about growing up in Georgia. One day he and some friends were passing a cornfield and they discovered how fun it is to rip ears of corn off of the stalk and throw them at each other. In a short time, they ruined a lot of corn. Pretty soon, the farmer caught them, and he stopped what they were doing. The boys apologized, and they spent some time straightening up the remaining stalks and saving the remaining corn that they could. Now, fortunately, the farmer was gracious and forgiving. He'd been a boy once, apparently. But Al still had to explain it to his parents. He he apologized to them. And they were also forgiving. Now his father said something that day that always stuck with him. Now his father said, there's something important I want to pass on to you. As you go through life, you can do a lot of things that will affect your mother and me. You can make us very angry. You can make us very sad. You can make us very embarrassed. There's one thing you cannot do, no matter how hard you try. You cannot make us stop loving you. You are our son. And we will always love you, no matter what. Grace is like that father. Grace is that which sees through our egos and our mistakes and sees our soul our potential for goodness and love. Grace reminds us that no matter what we do or have done, we can still be blessed and be a blessing. Now, I know a man named Brian who, after 20 years of marriage, was escorted out of his house by police officers in front of his children. His wife had enough of their deteriorating marriage And she had promised herself that one more act of physical violence, and no matter how small, she was going to call the police. Now the police gave him a few minutes to pack a suitcase and to hug his kids, and then he was out of the house for good. That night as Brian sat in a lonely laundromat, watching his socks spinning around in the dryer, he could feel his mind spinning too as his life was being turned upside down. He was confused about what had become of him and his dreams. Some wonderful people came into Brian's life. People took him in, helped him find some new perspectives. Like the father and the prodigal son, these people blessed him and they loved him and they believed in him regardless of what he had done. And many years later, Through a combination of will and grace, Brian has a great relationship with his children and his former wife. He has a successful second marriage. He's become a highly rewarded volunteer who trains other volunteers who work with families in grief. He's also started his own nonprofit that helps underprivileged children. Brian could have been so angry at himself and so disheartened that he could have lived the rest of his life in anger and undermined, undermining his future mistakes, I mean, his future, the future of his life because of his mistakes and because of his anger and his own self-pity. He could have blamed his ex-wife for all of his problems. That's the kind of thing the ego likes to do, blame others for our mistakes. And Brian could have eventually died an angry, bitter person who had alienated himself from his family and possibly from his community. But through the grace of others, he made another choice. He was not going to live the rest of his life feeling demoralized and defeated, nor was he going to wallow in self-pity. Instead, he gave the best of himself for the rest of his life. And through a combination of will and grace, he came to be blessed and to be a blessing. Both life and the Bible are filled with stories 
of how God uses flawed and imperfect people, people like me and you, to bless the world. As you begin this new year as, and this new decade, remember that when you're feeling weak and troubled and as if you'd erred in many ways, that you are never disqualified from being blessed. Now, I, know, I know there are those who are considering this message, who have something that embarrasses them, plagues them, or frightens them, something inside of you or in your life that's less than perfect. And because of that, you may have disqualified yourself from being blessed or being a blessing. But remember, God does not seek out perfect people. Never has. God uses and blesses imperfect people, like me and you. Because God never loses sight of our soul. Only we do that. May you be surprised by grace. You can't buy it, earn it, or plan for it. You just have to open to it and accept it when it comes as a gift. And remember that you too are a vehicle of grace. As they say in India, namaste. My soul blesses your soul. Amen. And Happy New Year.